Welcome to a session on how to create services in uh, DX application performance management. What we'll be walking through today is explaining what services are, how to create a service, and what are the pros and cons of using different types of service creation wizards, and a brief overview of service analytics. At the end of the session, we'll walk you through a demo on how to create your first service in CA app, app application performance management, and how to use the service to capture metrics and define your availability based on the metrics that you have chosen. So to give a brief introduction, what are services? So services are basically a collection of configuration items. And we say configuration items, these can be your applications, these can be your agents in application performance management, these can be your hosts on tools such as CS Spectrum or ADA, or a collection of topologies that have already predefined on a CMDB, or network devices which are available that support your infrastructure. Now, a service can comprise of a combination of these items or a specific instance of these items. So the service definition overall is really broad. So a service can be a business service, it can be an end user experience monitoring service, it can be monitoring or creating a use case for customer journeys. So the service definition overall here talks about how to define a service that impacts how the data being collected across all your different sources and how to use the data that's being collected from your different sources to congregate the data in a single point of view to analyze and understand how the service overall is performing. So in a brief example, let us say I have a DX application performance management and I have 10,000 agents that are running and I have two web applications. Here, a service can comprise of both the applications on a global scale and I can call this service overall application availability service. Or I have the option to create separate services or individual services for each of these applications. And when I create a service, I have the option of picking and choosing the agents that populate that particular application. So in this example, when we talked about two specific applications, let's say each application is serviced by 5,000 agents each. Now I can create two separate services where the first service will be for application A, which is getting data from these 5,000 agents, and the other service is application B, which is getting data from the other 5,000 agents. Now all the metrics, the alarms, the anomalies, the threshold violations, and basic raw data that are collected from these 5,000 agents will be used to populate the service that you create in CA, a DX application performance management. So in this example, like we talked about, service definition is at an overall a global methodology or representation on how a particular monitoring for a subset of business services are to be performed. Now, at a bottom line, when you look at it, uh, when you want to monitor the health of a specific service, you need to take into account the different components or the different endpoints that comprise of that specific service. So the brief example that we talked about where two applications are monitored by 5,000 agents each, now at a higher level, that application might need network routers to work, it might need web application servers to work, it might need physical virtual machines or a containerized environment like a Kubernetes uh, setup or an OpenShift setup to work. So the metrics that are collected from these instances too define how the application's health is performing. So beyond just a specific source, which is the 5,000 agents from application performance management, we also need the metrics and we also need the uh, data that's being collected from the other supporting components that make up this application. So a service definition can be really granular or at a really high level. There is no set specific conditions on how services are created. It's entirely up to an administrator or a business owner to map out what a service definition looks like for their specific use case and then pull in all the required components or all the required endpoints, which we call as configuration items, to create the said service. Now, how does service creation work? 
Now, when you look at the service creation workflow, the basic methodology behind service creation is you first have to define how your service has to look like, which is, is it at a global level? Is it at a granular level? If it is at a global level, what are the different metrics and what are the different components that you need to pull in to create the service? So basically, when you get started with creating a service using the wizard, which is what this example shows you, the first thing you need to do is add the service metadata, which is the configuration items. So here, you'll basically collect information from different source products. So in this example, let's say I want to create a service for the application A, which not only has 5,000 APM agents, but also has three web servers that are monitored using uh, Spectrum robots, um, two of the network routers that are monitored using NFA and ADA, and you also have performance management data from these hosts. Coupled on top of all of this, let's say that you also have some routers that service the application. Now, data from all these are not going to be available from the same source product. The agents will have metrics that are getting reported into APM, or application performance management. You will have your network data going into NFA, or network flow analyzer, or any other tools you might use to capture network data, the router data. And then you have your uh, host and uh, virtual machine information that flow into products like PM or any other source product that you might have. So the second step, once you have defined what your application or how your monitoring has to take place under the context of a service, the second step is to choose the appropriate source products to get the information into the service. And now the third part, once you are done with this, is within the source product, what are the individual elements that make up the specific application or that power the specific application? For in this example, we talked about three of the web server hosts that are monitored using Spectrum and also by PM, and you want to pull metrics in. You choose those specific hosts, either via an IP address or a host name or a cluster name, and add it to the service. You do the same exercise from NFA or any other uh, flow analyzer for your routers and other appliances that comprise of the network part. And then you've already chosen the infrastructure part. And the third part is your application, which is the 5,000 agents. Now, the agents can be chosen with agent names or by host names or by cluster names or by process ID or by application name, which we will look at when we go to create our first service. So now you have broadly defined what your service is. You have understood all your source product that power your application or your service. You have identified the individual components inside the source product that populate your service or service your application. And the third part is editing the weightage and editing the metrics. So here at a high level, to give you an example, let's say we have this example of an application uh, that we just talked about with agents, with the hosts that are monitored by Spectrum and PM, and with physical routers that are monitored using the flow analyzer. Now, if the router goes down, that means regardless of your backend database or the agents or the application server or the web server running, the whole application becomes unserviceable or unusable. So in this case, from a contextual perspe perspective, I need to make sure that I assign a higher weightage to issues concerning networks or infrastructure because that becomes the bare bones or the basics for monitoring your application. Now, out of the 5,000 agents, let us say out of the three application servers I have, one of the application server goes down. That might carry a significantly lower weightage than something that's affecting my overall network or something that's affecting my overall infrastructure. So in this case, I would assign a slightly lower weightage or a lower importance to a specific application server compared to what I would assign as a significance for the router or the network layer or the infrastructure layer. So this is what we call editing the framework requirements, basically. So once you choose the source products, you edit how important that is to in the context of the service creation. The third part is basically assign weightages and add it up to a total of what you would define is 100% available application. Make sure that the weightages that you assign add up to 100%. Otherwise, the service creation wizard will fail. And once you have done that, you basically save your service creation. So this is a high-level workflow on how a service gets created. 
and what are the mechanics behind how a service gets defined and how it gets created. Now moving forward, uh, we have talked about all these source products. So keep in mind all the metrics from these source products are not stored in a single place. For example, we talked about APM. So the metrics from these agents and metrics from any database hosts, they're not exactly stored on a backend database or an Elasticsearch data store. They're stored in what we call TAS or topology as a service. So a topology analytics store. And when we create services, these metrics get pulled in from TAS. Similarly, we have network storage or NAS, and then we have alarms and raw metrics coming in from these products that are stored in Elasticsearch. So the service creation wizard basically not only pulls in raw metrics or basic host names, but it also pulls the topology. It also pulls the identification of how these individual items work and how it is in importance of the context to a service creation. So it basically talks to three different backends, the task, the topology store, the network store, and Elastic to pull in the relevant information that you need to create your own service. Now, how do you create a service? We talked about what is a service, how do you go about defining a service, and what are the different backends from which data is being pulled in order for you to create a service. Now, what are the ways of doing it? In DX application performance management and operational intelligence, we offer three ways of creating services. One is through our interactive UI wizard, which we will show you a demo at the end of the session. The second is through REST APIs, which we have published on our documentation page. So you can create services using REST APIs as and when an application gets created or bundled. So if you have a continuous delivery tool, or you have a QA testing tool, or you're testing different versions of the application, rather than using a UI wizard to walk you through, you can always use our REST APIs and programmatically add it when an application gets created so that a corresponding service gets created on DX application performance management and operational intelligence as when an application gets created. The third way is if you have a CMDB or a topology store that is already in place that has the topology for your application or your service, we give you the option to import the topology directly in order to populate the service creation wizard. So these are the three ways in which we create services in OI. Now, out of the box, we offer integrations or the ability to pull in topology data from APM, Spectrum, ADA, and IM. Now, we also offer other third-party integrations that we'll touch upon a brief uh, bit at the end of the demo. Now, when we talk about using APM data, and then we'll walk through a demo at the end of the presentation, when you actually go through the service creation wizard, whose screenshot you're looking at on the screen, once you click on Add Service, you have the option of importing a topology. So here, for example, if you look at the type, you basically get to choose what kind of a configuration item service, which is called Sys, how that gets imported from APM into your service creation wizard. Now, once you choose this individual endpoint from APM, when you proceed with the service creation workflow, let's say we go back to the example of those 5,000 agents. Now, you don't want to be presented with a list of 10,000 agents here. So you have a filter option on the screen. So if the list is too long, you can narrow it on by specifically typing in an agent name or a host name or a cluster name or a process ID or an application name. So we have the ability to filter by any of these features in order to present the right agents that are appropriate in your context for creating your own service. Now, once you have selected these individual agents, you get a context or you get a high-level overview of how your service looks like. So in this screenshot, I've chosen the following options or the following hosts from my list of agents that are represented here. And the screen on the right basically shows you how these individual agents conglomerate or basically work cohesively to create what I've called as my service. So this has are the links between the individual agents, the individual hosts, the infrastructure on which the host runs on. That linking is done automatically because we have an understanding of how 
APM, our IM, and other products in our ecosystem work. So if you have an agent that's running on a web server that's monitored by Spectrum or PM, we have the option of showing you the infrastructure layer, and then by clicking on the infrastructure layer, you can see the individual agents that are running inside that infrastructure, and then that gives you a context of how your service is defined. So you can view at a higher level on the network level or the infrastructure level or the application level. So once you have created uh, this, or once you have chosen all the uh, individual configuration item, or what we call CIs, basically to populate your service, you can still preview uh, what you have chosen to understand how your service would look like before you actually save it. So this way you get to pick, make and choose all the right services or all the right CIs that comprise your service. And you also have the option to ensure that you have not left out any specific endpoints or any specific items that you might think how your service might be impacted when creating your configuration items. So in this case, uh, basically we choose all the nodes, all the infrastructure hosts, all the network appliances, and then you have the option of preview how these all fit together to create your service before you actually save it. So once you have created this, and once you have already chosen all the individual endpoints, you can preview the topology. And the next thing to do when we go back and look at the workflow is you assign weightages and you assign uh, subservices. So what this means is now you have a service created, let's say called TickChange, and now TickChange has two network routers, three physical machines, two virtual machines, and 5,000 application agents that are used to power that whole service. Now you have the option to define whether the agents directly comprise of the service or the agents in turn power a new service or a subservice called agent service, which in turn powers your application, which is basically your granularity definition. So you can have all 5,000 agents directly contribute to your service, or you can create a subservice, which is like a level two service, where you say all these 5,000 agents have to run in order to power my application service. And this application service in turn is what is responsible for my overall service for the application. So here you have the option of creating those subservices. Along with that, we talked about weightages. So here, let's say the network layer takes precedence over the infrastructure and the application layer. Let's say out of 100% overall availability, 70% is dictated by the availability of your network devices. 20% is dictated by your availability of your infrastructure devices, which can be physical hosts or virtual machines or any robots that are used to gather metrics from these sources. And 10%, the remaining 10% is how your application agents and your individual endpoints power the service. So I can assign these weightages here in the screen. And then the only point to take note of here is to make sure that you define the weightages correctly because once you have defined, there are some weightages that can be changed, but there are some, for example, on the network side that cannot be changed. So there's no option of going back and rolling these changes back. So you have to make sure that you get the weightages assigned correctly on the service creation wizard before you save the service. And when we look at the weightage in more detail, so you have the option of using a couple of terminologies. One is called the risk reducer. So what is a risk reducer? Let's say if I create an overall service called TickChange, and then I have 5,000 agents, which I used to say TickChange APM service. So now the TickChange APM service powers the TickChange overall service. Now the overall service availability of TickChange should be 100% when my TickChange APM service is 100%. So when my TickChange APM service is not 100%, my overall availability should also be diminished. So how do I define that? So in order of risk, one agent out of the 5,000 not working might not be a down operational status or any impact to the overall service. It might be of impact to the TickChange APM service that we created as a subservice but not to the overall service. So this is what we define as a risk reducer. So how do you make sure that a specific agent not working or not running 
does not impact or does not show you as a critical status on the overall service. So we create what we call as subservices, which in turn act as risk reducers. So this way, a particular agent not work, reporting metrics or a particular agent being restarted doesn't show that your overall service is critical just because that one agent is not running. The same can be said to what we call the health balancer. So how do you balance the health? So in this case, we talked about having three network routers. Let's say it's running on a high availability mode and you only need two of the routers to be on at any single point of time in order to achieve 100% operational status. So in this case, when I distribute the weightage, I would not say each router is responsible for 33% of my overall availability because that's a false statement. So in this case, I would say a combination of two of three would, would be 100% in order for the service to work. So when I create a router, let's say router A, that's indispensable, I will assign it 50% weightage. Then I'll create a subservice for the other two routers. Let's call it a router service or a MFA service, which in turn is used to power the overall tick chain service. Now, those individual services under the router service will have 50% each. So this way, if, even if one goes down, you still get 75%, which is overall a better status and which will not result in your application showing critical status. So these are options to balance the health to make sure that you pick and choose the right configuration items or the right endpoints to ensure that uh, you have operational status even if 75% of your appliances are up and running, which doesn't impact your service in any critical way. Now, when we look at the metric calculation for services, we look at, we talked about how to assign weightages, how to calculate the health, how to calculate the availability. So this slide just explains how all these combined together shows or works in context of an overall service. So basically the first thing to do is to capture the health. We need to make sure that we collect metrics from all these three endpoints, from the application tier, the infrastructure tier, and the network tier. The second thing is once we have all these three, we not only show just whether the overall service is available just by looking at if the agents are reporting data or not. We also calculate the health by analyzing the metrics that are coming from each of these endpoints. Let's say we have 5,000 agents. We not only get the status if the agent is up or down, but we already also look at the individual metrics and the alerts that each of these 5,000 agents are reporting. So if a particular agent is reporting high memory usage or high CPU usage, that will in turn result in showing you a decreased availability for the overall service. Even though the agent is on and reporting metrics, we also look at the individual metrics and the context of the metrics to give you an overall availability for your service based on what we decipher that the agent is trying to tell us. For each of the nodes that we have added to create the service, we also calculate the distance or the average between the most severe alert and then use that as a threshold for making predictive insights or showing you the availability for that specific application. So if there's a particular agent out of the 5,000 agents that is consistently repeating or consistently showing you a high memory usage, that'll be set up as a new threshold. So only if there is a violation to that threshold, we will show you a decreased availability for the service. Otherwise, even though it's reporting in the high 90% of CPU usage, it will not impact your application in any way because that's the normal functioning of how that agent runs. So we use machine learning and pattern recognition to understand the metrics that are being posted by the agents, to understand the context of the metrics, to create new thresholds that are dynamic, and then use them to define the availability of your service. And then once you have all this, using the data from alerts, using the data from metrics, using the data from individual nodes and the overall availability, we calculate all these metrics together to show you the health and risk and the overall availability of your service. Now, if you were to look at any of these in further detail, uh, we talk about three things, health, availability, and metrics. So the first thing we wanna look at is health. Now, this basically shows you how we calculate the health metrics. Basically, it's a binary values. So if there are any critical alarms present, 
we automatically consider that that specific item is not available. So it can be an agent, it can be a host, it can be an appliance. So even if there are one critical alarm present, when we get the metrics or the alarms getting reported from that particular CI or from that particular agent or from that particular node, we automatically consider that that node is not available. So which will in turn decrease the overall availability of your application. Then we look at the weightages that we have assigned when we created a service. Now if that CI, let's say is a router, and that router has a critical alarm, and that router carries 50% weightage, then we automatically show you that your overall service called Pixion is only 50% available because this one router is having issues. We also use a formula that we use to improve dynamic thresholding to capture metrics as and when they occur. So this is on a more proactive basis where we monitor every single alert and metric that comes in to dynamically create new thresholds. And based on these new thresholds, we'll constantly change what is the operational status or the availability of your service. Now, how do we calculate risk? Now, risk is the probability of a service going down. We typically rate risk from a scale of zero to four. This is again based on the significance, and you can see the impact and the calculations that are down there at the bottom of the slide. So if the impact value is zero, which is no risk, basically that means there are no critical alarms that are coming in and everything looks good. Now, if there is a high number of items that are having uh, either moderate to severe alarms or even a single critical alarm for more than 45 seconds or more than a specific set of occurrences, then immediately the risk goes into the highest setting, which is four, and then we show a decrease in overall availability of the application. So the more the critical alarms, the higher the risk, which in turn means lower, lower availability of the application or lower availability of the service. Now, on top of that service, we talked about just using all the appliances or CIs or nodes to calculate a service. Now, what else can you add to a service? It can be stuff such as tags, where you can actually add search filters. You can actually add geolocation. So not only can you define a service just based on three different tiers, such as the application tier, network tier, or uh, our infrastructure tier, but you can also use geolocation tags to identify and isolate a specific geolocation region, and then basically use all the CIs, which means all the routers, all the hosts, all the machines that are monitored using Spectrum or PM, all the nodes that are running on APM that are getting data into APM based on a specific geo region, let's say EMEA or let's say Germany, and then create a service just based on the geolocation. You also have the ability to add custom properties, which is when you create a service, how does it impact your revenue? How does it impact your retention? How does it impact your users? And this specific data is obtained from our end user monitoring tool, which is application experience analytics, and your business payload analyzer, which is BPA. So you can not only show the operational status of a service just based on your infrastructure and network and your application tier, but you can also show how this directly impacts your revenue, how this directly impacts your retention, how this directly impacts your user availability and your application availability, and any user feedback that comes in out of a reduced availability for your application or your service. So this works in conjunction with our end user monitoring tools, like I just said. So you have a single pane of view that gets data from all these sources, that analyzes the metrics, that assigns criticality, that assigns risk, and then in turn shows you the availability of your service that you created in context of user retention, revenue, percentage of users who are getting affected, any specific geolocation or any specific data center that goes down, and all this in the context gives you the definition of what a service is overall. So before we move on to our hands-on where we create a service, just to recap what we talked about. So a service is something that's universally defined based on a requirement from a business application owner or a process owner or an administrator. This can mean either an application only topology or an application with infrastructure or an application infrastructure and network topology. You have the option to pick and choose what we call CIs 
or individual configuration items or individual hosts, nodes, clusters, agents, process names, application names to create a service. We talked about how to create subservices, the risk reducer, the health balancer, how to assign weightages, how to assign importance, how we calculate criticality, how we get alarms, how we analyze alarms, how we create dynamic thresholds, how we use machine learning and pattern recognition to understand the metrics that are coming in from each of these CIs or configuration items, how that in turn affects the overall availability of your service. And then we also looked at how the severity, how the criticality and the availability is calculated using metrics and weightages. And then we also looked at how the overall availability of a service can be viewed in conjunction with end user metrics such as revenue, your user retention, your geolocation, the percentages of users who are getting affected by a reduced availability in your application, and the overall creation of a service in general. Now, with this, let's go to a demo where we'll walk you through how to create the service using the service creation wizard. And then we'll basically walk through creating a subservices, assigning weightages, how to import data from a topology store, how to create your own service, how to view services in context of end user metrics, and basically the ability to create a service and view the criticality and availability. So once you log into operational intelligence, the first part you'll be navigated to is the services menu. Now, in my case, I have two services created, Exchange and a dummy service. So the first thing we need to do is launch the service creation wizard. That can be done by clicking on the three-dot menu on the top right and clicking on a button that says Add Service. Now, once you do Add Service, basically, you have the ability to add CIs, which is what we talked about. So CIs are automatically split into three categories, Applications, Infrastructure, Network. For the application, data can be sorted by application name, by agent name, by host name, by process name or type. And this data typically comes in from our DX application performance management tool. When we click on infrastructure, this is the data that comes in from our performance management, UIM, and Spectrum tools. And it can be of any of your own data sources. Now here again, you can sort by UIM group, your host name, your IP address, your type of virtualization environment or physical, Kubernetes, OpenShift, containerized environment, or if you're using cloud monitoring, your VMware data center. The third type, your domain, is your network type. And here we use Spectrum and PM, basically, and your NFA tools to basically collect information from your network part. So this can be topology data, a device address, a device name, a router name, a PM group, a Spectrum container, or a global collection agent. So in our example, I want to create a service in context of an application, and I want to use specific nodes, hosts, and a process name to add individual CIs into my application, and then use that application to create a service, assign weightages, and create subservices. So here, if I go to application and sort by agent name, these are all the agents that I have reporting into my operational intelligence and my application performance management backend. So here I can either filter and look for a specific host. So I automatically get it. I can also filter by a specific process name, a specific application name, or basically have the ability to type or specifically get some custom values put in that matches the cluster name or the agent domain name. So in this case, uh, I have one, which is the DXE. So i have just clicking on the plus sign here, automatically adds it to my CI. So this is one of the elements that I've added. Now going back into application, Now I want to start by host names, right? So here, once I apply the filter, I have the ability to basically look for specific hosts and basically add it to my subservices and use that as a CI to power my main service. I don't have any data coming in from other source products, so the example is going to be the same. So you basically pick and choose what you want to add 
and then once you're done, you have the ability to add elements and then look at the preview and also look at the topology. So in this case, going back, we're going to go ahead. and add these five APM agents, uh, basically using the host names to create my uh, service. And now after I add each of my CIs or each of my agents, I have the ability to preview the topology for this one. So assuming I had the experience collector running on a specific infrastructure, I have the ability to view the infrastructure layer or the physical layer. So in this case, you can see that these are the three services. One is called the token service, the activity service, and the process service. So it's the same a Java agent or an APM agent that monitors all these three processes. So I, uh, even though I add a specific agent based on the host name, I see all the processes that that agent is monitoring under the host, and I get it automatically under the topology preview. In this example, I have an agent which is also acting as an infrastructure agent, which is a universal monitoring agent. So I can selectively view just the infrastructure part or the agent part or a combination of these two. So this is how uh, selecting a host name works. So if you select the host name and the host has an application agent and an infrastructure agent that are monitoring the same host, you get both of these automatically picked up by our tool and automatically previewed to you before you create your service. I also have created or added a couple of database agents here. So this is basically MySQL agents. So again, I can preview them. So this shows me the backend database. And this shows me the agent, which is an APM infrastructure agent for database that is monitoring the act actual database. So now that I've picked all these individual components, I click on Add Elements, and I automatically create a service. Now here, by default, the name of the service is called new service. Just by selecting that, you have the option of renaming it to whatever your choice is. In this case, I'm going to say lesson one. I can provide a brief description for the service. And I can tag the service, which makes it easy for me to search for the service in case I were creating future services, or if I want to add this overall service as a subservice to my bigger definition. I also have the ability to tag locations using geolocations that I talked about, and also add any custom metrics, assuming I have data from my end user monitoring tools, such as revenue, such as percentage of user retention, percentage of users getting affected by non-availability of this service uh, based on crash data, criticality, and the risk. Now, once I do that, if I click on the preview tool, which is the button on the top, now you get uh, the definition of how the service called Lesson 1 tutorial looks like. So these are all the individual nodes. You can see how these are linked together. So this is based on the host. So I can view the infrastructure part only, the agent part only, and then basically view the individual topologies for the elements or the CIs that I added to create the service and how they are connected with each other and then how that's going to power my overall service. The second thing we are going to take a look at is let's assume that underneath one of the databases, you have a high availability database. So now you want to create a subservice here or you want to remove or rename how this link gets drawn. So you have the option of creating a subservice by unchecking the box and then by creating a new grouping service here. And then you link it to the subservice bar. So this I created by unchecking the create a subservice and instead using this new service, I added a grouping service to this database. And now I'm calling this service database high availability agent. So this I can always do, and these are all the selected filters. So you see that I'm using my database as the main element. I'm adding a grouping service to it. So which means if I go back to the overall service, 
I'll be able to see that this particular database has a subservice associated with it, and then basically use that subservice to power part of my overall service. You can always edit filters on specific hosts. You can change names. So now the second part, which is the important part, is the variages. So by default, when you create a service, you'll see that this checkbox that says auto wait has been checked on. Now, if you uncheck it, you'll see that each of these variages can be edited. Like I said, the goal is to make sure that the total should be 100. So in this case, I'm getting a red because if you add up the numbers, I have 20, 20, 20, 20, and 10, which means the total is only 90%, which means one of these has to be edited or everything to get an overall weightage of 100%. So this is how you now define if, let's say, for example, this is your router, this is your infrastructure layer, and these three are your application layer. So the router has the highest weightage. Let's say it has a weightage of 70%. Your infrastructure, let's say there are two of them, each have a weightage of 10. Now, the remaining would be um, the other uh, remaining part would be the 10%. So my applications would be five each, for example. And now once the overall availability or overall weightage is 100%, everything is green, now I'm good to go. So this is how you manually assign weightages to each of your CIs or to each of your nodes to indicate how that affects the overall availability or the overall criticality of this service called lesson one tutorial. Once we're done with this, you have previewed it, you have no questions whatsoever, everything looks good, you have all the elements that you need to create a service, you have all the CIs, you have created the subservices as you deem fit. You have automatically assigned the variages or use your man manual variages to assign the criticality and importance. You go ahead and hit save here. And you see that the estimated time for the service to take effect is 30 seconds. So within 30 seconds, you'll see the service being listed here. And then based on the elements that you have chosen, you'll see the metrics under each of them and how it this impacts the overall availability of the application. So while we wait for the service that we just created, let us take a quick uh, peek at some of the services that I've already defined for the purposes of this demo. So this is my exchange service. And looking at the topology here, I can show you how this is linked to each of my backend sources. So I can see that I have assigned an equal weightage here. So which means uh, there are two running on each data center, one on the East Coast and one on the West Coast. Each of these have either a high critical service alarm. So if you remember the presentation, even if you have one service alarm, that means that the overall availability is reduced and the risk is denominated as high. So you can click on that particular node and see all the risks that are automatically tagged here. And then by clicking on the menu, it will take you directly to the alarms page where you can actually act on the alarms. You can assign this alarm to someone else or you can basically use automatic remediation using Atomic, or you can create a service ticket. Now, this is done as part of a different tutorial called Alarms and Evidence Timelines, so I would suggest you take a look at that course. Now, going back here into our service that we created, if you notice, you also have the ability to view the topology for each of the individual nodes. In this case, my tick change overall service is denominated by two databases that are running on each data center. And the availability of the database dictates the availability of the service. Now there is one service, which is 100%, which has equal weightage. So in this case, the health of the application is only 66% because both of these are only 50% available. So this means out of the 33, it's only about 16.5% uh, available, this is 16.5% available, and this is 33% available. Put together, it's 66% available. So even though there are two high risks on individual databases on two different data centers, since my main application process is running fine, the risk is moderate. But looking at an individual node level, you see that the risks associated with these two are high. Now, if you want to understand more on each of these, on how to 
view the alarms or how to view individual impacts of these alarms on the overall service, I would suggest you go through the course on alarms and evidence timelines. Now, going back into the services page, just to wrap up, by the way, our services just came in and we are still waiting to collect some metrics, which we will see in a little bit. But then using this as a demo, you can see that these are all my individual services. There is no limit on how many services you can have and how to create a service. We looked at assigning rate pages, creating subservices, and then you also have the ability to click on a specific service. There is no option to delete a service, but you can deactivate it or you can edit it. So let's say I want to edit a running service. This is where I would go in and edit it. If you notice, that the name is grayed out, which is one of the points that I made during the presentation. So there are certain elements that cannot be changed when you create a service. Make sure that you get it right when you create a service, such as the name, such as the weightage. But the weight can be edited at any point in time, assuming it's not a critical service. So can be the custom properties, which is your revenue, your percentage of users impacted, so on and so forth. Now, assuming you have all those end user metrics coming in, which I don't have, but then assuming you have those metrics coming in, now you can see the availability of the service, not just by the alarms or your individual CIs, but how much revenue is being impacted by the service being only 66% available, your users who are being affected by crashes, so this is all custom properties or customizable values, and you can click on any of these to basically go and check. So in this case, my numbers are a little um, not over the top, but then you can see all the alarms that are coming in. You can go look at the critical alarms, basically act on the alarms, and then take it forward from there. So that concludes our service creation definition of a service on how to create your own service to get started in digital experience, operational intelligence, and application performance management. Thank you for, very much for attending this course, and have a great day. Bye.